Are We Living in a Simulation? Episode 10. Simulation Evidence, Part 1. Have we found evidence of error correcting code in the universe? Or should I say, have we discovered evidence of code in the simulation? When we look into the sky with our own eyes and view everything that we can of our universe and consider everything inside it, it's natural for one to believe that everything has been calculated and created for a reason. That unlike a simple piece of human-made buggy software, our universe instead is robust and can never fail or fall over. But what if that's not entirely correct? Is it possible to consider that whoever or whatever created the simulation was all too aware of possible errors and glitches and possibly applied code to patch any future potential issues up before they could develop? I'm sure even this episode will likely have errors and things missing. Now, if you consider creating something the size of the universe, or even multiple universes, then we can understand that whoever created it expected some problems at some point. Perhaps we've already witnessed some of these glitches and potential bugs. But that is not what I wish to focus on today. Instead, I'd like to bring your attention to a 2014 discovery relating to quantum computing. Now don't worry, I won't be going into too much detail on that today, but back in 2014, a small group of three quantum gravity researchers, Chi Dong, Daniel Harlow, and Ahmed Amhiri, made a surprising discovery. While busy working inside a theoretical playground system, their calculations revealed that their holographic version of space-time was operating incredibly similar to something they had all witnessed before. Quantum Error Correcting Code Quantum error correcting code is something that quantum computer engineers must make use of due to the volatile nature of this type of computing. Unlike the computer you may be using today that uses a basic switch system of one or zero, quantum computers, as you may know, can be both one and zero. Quantum error correcting code is important because quantum computing is prone to errors and needs a solution to help keep it stable. Now, if we think of our space-time as a code in the Antidositor simulation, then this could explain how a woven-like basis for space-time can also be so vigorous. What's also interesting is that this small group of researchers were not necessarily trying to reverse engineer space-time or look for error correcting code on purpose. The code was identified almost like a mathematical pattern while they played with the holographic version of space-time. We would not have been able to identify this pattern a hundred years ago because quantum computing is a relatively recent development in our human timeline. So what if there may be other built-in correcting codes and practices within the universe designed to stop the entire thing from falling over? We might discover them soon, or perhaps we will have to wait for our technology to catch up. Could artificial intelligence and machine learning take this research even further by identifying other similar patterns? But for now, it's safe to say that this 2014 research is one of the strongest forms of evidence we have in the simulation theory argument. So thanks to Dong, Harlow, and Arm Hiri for their work. But that's enough existential crisis for today. As always, please let me know your thoughts. See you next time when I will be covering part 2 of artificial intelligence in the simulation. Please subscribe so you don't miss it. For more on my simulation theory content, please visit awlias.com.